Hi, welcome back. Um, this is about as uh, as quick as I've had between videos. Um, well, I didn't really, I've only started these videos for a laugh, to be perfectly honest. Um, if you go back through my channel, you'll see there's bits of this, bits of that, and all the rest of it. So, um, anyway seems to be coming a bit of a thing and there's quite a lot of people have got in touch and said oh what does it sound like what's it sound like what's it sound like well okay i have listened to them i have listened to them all um and uh well it's not disappointing it's very 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 interesting now as i said um it's actually monday now so as i said on saturday this is my i can take it out of the sleeve i keep i keep everything in blake sleeves they're called Blake sleeves. I really like them, uh, just to keep everything nice, you know. Um, so this is the copy I bought oh, a good few years ago now, released in two thousand and eleven on Premonition Records, which is the original label of uh, Patricia Barber. And this one on the back says, um, "Produced by Patricia Barber, executive producer Michael Friedman, mastered by Bob." Ludwig for Gateway Mastering and Mastered for Vinyl by Dub Sa Doug Sachs of the Mastering Lab, plus pressed by um, QRP. Now, it's a really good record. It's a really, really, really good record. So until, um, I don't know, six months ago, maybe a year ago, uh, all I had was this, and I think I probably had the original CD. Um, and... Um, you know, so this this was uh, this was my main playing copy, really. I mean, it's not it's not an album I play an awful lot. It's one I kind of tend to use for demos more than um, more than my own kind of you know just to chill out listening. If you see what I mean, it's a really 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 good album. But um, uh, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how it sits in my life. Anyway, it's it is. I mean, it really is one of the best recorded records ever. It's just it's you know depending on your taste, of course, but it is, um, it's an absolute treat for the ears. It really is. Um, hugely dynamic, spacious and open. Um, really, really beautifully arranged um, and dripping in reverb. It's just the space in it is, 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 is fine. And as I said in the last video, uh, some people don't like it. Some people get, I kind of, you know, frankly, I think on their high horse and get all a bit like, Oh, you know, um, oh, the, the reverb doesn't match. Bloody hell, you know, there's longer reverb on this than that, and that doesn't make sense, you know. Well, you know, good for them. Um, if that's the kind of way you look at recorded music, really, um, I would suggest you only bother listening to live recorded music because, you know, everything else is kind of created in the studio, and it's... Uh, you know, an artist can use whatever tools are at their disposal to make something that they think uh, is good to listen to. Same way as with painting, someone makes something that's good to look at. You know, this is definitely, definitely good to listen to. Now, this is the original premonition. What's the number? 90760-1. Hugely recommended. And I think this was about 60 or 70 quid at the time. It's a very, very, very nice pressing. Very, very, very worth having. Now, put that one there. Now, this is the other thing that I mentioned. And I would just say, if you haven't already seen the, my previous video, uh, where I ramble on about this for quite some time, I would, I would recommend, you know, if you're interested, go back and have a look at that one. Maybe, you know, stop this now before I get to the verdict. Go back and have a look at that one. Anyway. This is, uh, this is a very rare thing. I mean, you can actually still got them. Funny enough, I got an email from Jonathan um, a couple of weeks ago to say that he's running another batch. So if you want one of these, um, get in touch with Jonathan Horwich um, and um, International Phonograph, his, his business is, and he is the official duplicator of these. And these are copied from... Um, well, copy, he'll, he'll be sent a production master <clears throat> and he'll make these one-to-one -one copies. Now, it's interesting looking at this book here that comes with the tape um, to see that um, notes on the transfer of Patricia Barber master tapes by Doug Sachs. 
So the original master was supplied in a half inch NAB EQ 15 IPS tape. Uh, recorded using Dolby SL. Now that's kind of interesting because you would have thought that most things these days, or back in the 90s anyway, um, well in fact this was, you know, so this is essentially this is a 2011 album because they went back and remixed it. It's, it's you know, it's a new piece of work if you like. Um, so 2011 for them not to be using 30 IPS is kind of quite surprising, but uh, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not complaining about that. I've got it's another. It's another matter, 30 versus 15 IPS. Hmm. Well, I won't get into that here. Anyway, the original was in uh, NAB EQ, and he copies them into IEC EQ. It's kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, blah, 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 enough of uh, rambling on about this. $500, obviously, if you're buying this in the UK, there's shipping, there's duty, there's VAT, there's all the rest of it. It's, I think I said in my previous one, it was more like £600, probably more like £700 anyway. But you get two tapes. You get a one, you know, a one-to-one -one copy from, um, you know, an original production master, I guess, or a safety master, or, you know, they're not going to send the original half-inch. Well, I know they didn't send the original half-inch masters to, um, well, I'm pretty damn certain they didn't, to Jonathan to uh, reproduce these. But anyway, this sounds better. Of course it does. Of course, of course it does. Um, the bass is fuller, the sound stage is more stable, um, the separation, um, it's kind of, I wouldn't say there's, I wouldn't say there's an awful lot of difference in the sound quality between these two, in the sound, in the nature of the sound, the quality of the sound is clearly better on the tape, but in the nature of the sound, they sound similar, but um, clearly this one's better. But it's, you know, it's expensive. You need a really good reel-to-reel -reel machine to play it. All the rest of it. For most people, the original pressing is going to be great. Now, that's where we get through to this one. The subject of this review. The Impex Records one-step pressing. Which is very recently released. And uh, I got mine from... Um, uh, David Brook, and um, it's uh, it's 185 pounds in the UK. That's quite a lot of money for well, it's a heck of a lot of money for vinyl LP. But as I said before, it's pressed on what I would say is probably the same vinyl that Mobile Fidelity are using for their one stops, one steps. Um, it's a beautiful piece of vinyl. It's 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 beautifully presented. It's beautifully produced. It's beautifully packaged. Um, there's an awful, there's a big essay here about the one step process, how it all works. And believe me, having having listened to maybe um, half a dozen one steps, um, and not just mobile fidelity is obviously this. Um, and Lynn Stanley has also done a one step or two. So I've listened to them too. Um, they really do sound good. One step is, uh, you know, it's not it's not cheap. Uh, you can't make many, but it is without any question the best sound quality I've ever heard from vinyl. Okay. Now then, how does this compare? That's the that's the, um, the kind of the the real point of this, isn't it? Well, first of all, that's my favourite. Okay, there's no question. That's my favourite. This is my second favourite, the new Impex One Step, and that's my third favourite. Now, let me kind of give you some idea of the level of those quality differences, and then I'll go on to just try and very briefly discuss the nature of those differences. Now, if I was telling, if I was saying percentages, Let's say, I mean, I haven't got the original, original master and, and, and I haven't heard it. So let's say, for argument's sake, let's say this is 90%, okay? The tape. Most of you won't have heard that, I appreciate. Many of you will have heard this, okay? This is the 2011 um, premonition copy. Now, if the tape is 90%, I would say, let's say, let's say this is um, sixty percent. Okay. Now it's it's not as dynamic as the tape. 
If you go to the, if you can play this first, and then you play the tape. Uh, when, well, you play this first, you just think, wow, what a stunning piece of music, what a fabulous recording. You know, my hi fi is sounding amazing. The placing of the instruments, um, the, 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 just dripping with, with um, ambience and air around each instrument in, in, in the, uh, the way they've put it together. It's fabulous, um, dynamically and everything else. You go to the tape, it's in another league, and you go back to this, and it kind of sounds flat. Um, but it doesn't altogether sound that much different. It just sounds flatter, less dynamic, less space between things, but, but it's similar, okay? So let me think, what did I say? 60, did I say 60 for that? 90 for the tape? Um, Let's say 65 for that, okay? Let's be charitable. So 65 for that, 90 for the tape. So where does this come in? Well, I'd have to say this was at least 80. 80, um, yeah, 82, something like that, maybe. It is a lot, lot better than this. I, in fact, I would say that the difference between the new Impex one and the tape is smaller than the difference between the two vinyl pressings, okay? Um, that can give you any idea of the, um, the magnitude of the improvement here. It's stunning. On first listen, on very, very, very first listen, I wasn't altogether convinced. I didn't prefer the, the new vinyl pressing to the tape, but, you know, let everything warm up, let my cartridge warm up, let my tape machine warm up. They all take a good two sides to get, to get fully warmed up, I find. Um, and and you know things were then it was more clear where 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 the uh, the differences were at and, and and what was the best. Mm -hmm. So you know let's go back to that. So clearly the tape is the best, and frankly that's what's gonna that that will have been the source for the other things. So we can put that one away for now. It's um it's you know six seven hundred pound five hundred dollars plus your taxes and everything if you're based in the US. And if you are and you want one and you've got a reel to reel machine that plays fifteen IPS two track um for starters make sure it's a good one don't put it don't buy that and put it on a machine that's um just anything other than suboptimal because you know you don't spend six seven hundred pound on a recording to put it on a machine that's going to wear you know partly erase the tape because it's magnetized all that rubbish you just don't want to do it but this okay so how does it sound um, again, it doesn't sound the same as the tape, okay? Um, but in, 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 in comparison to this, how does it differ? Well, it's a heck of a lot more dynamic. Uh, a heck of a lot more dynamic. And it's a heck of a lot more open. Um, and, uh, and it's more transparent. And when I say transparent, um, I kind of mean transparent as in the, uh, as opposed to op opaque, okay? So, um, you know, so different people mean different things by transparent. Sometimes transparent can mean thin, you know, uh, which isn't necessarily accurate. Um, now, this does sound slightly thinner in a way than this one. Um, but it's, 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 it sounds... And put that one down now. So the, the new the new one step. If you kind of imagine, kind of this is the sound of of the original vinyl, and it's it's thirty three RPM. It's, it's really, I mean, it really is a stunning recording. You imagine that. Now this is a. It's forty five RPM. Now you typically you do that. You kind of you just it, it is it is like you've kind of stretched it out. You take a deep breath in and sort of stretched it out everything's more open there's more space there's more space for all the texture around any one bass note it's not just a mm, it's a mm, you know it's more everything you can you can listen more intimately into every note into every kind of um you know inflection of everything you know just how it is it's it's quite marked the difference there i mean it really is so on here the bass sounds um, on, on the, the, the original vinyl, which most of you will have heard. The bass sounds kind of full, 
thick. Let me go back to that opacity versus transparency. So it sounds opaque, the bass. Thick, tuneful, you know. On here, the bass is, is much, much, much more agile, much, much, much more transparent. Some people might say, oh, there's less of it. I can see that argument, but actually it's just, it's cleaner. It really is. Um, it's cleaner and it's clearer and you can hear through it more. Um, uh, dynamically, the whole thing is much more open. Um, her voice on this is, 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 is quite stunning. It really is. And um, I like the dynamic, you know, the way the guitars picked and banged and just, it's just, it's, it's there. It's, it's almost, almost incendiary happening in front of your, your eyes and your ears. Um, it's quite stunning. And versus the tape, I mean, there's, a, there's only small differences here, to be honest. I mean, it's, the tape is more solid sounding. I mean, tape typically is more solid sounding. It's, it, it's you know, it is actually the source. Um, and the only real other differences, I mean, in a way, the one step sounds cleaner, not cleaner, clearer. More to, the one step kind of sounds more transparent than the tape in a certain respect. Um, and I'd say that's, it's, it, it, it's, um, I think what that is, is between, as, as, as we all know, this, every instrument, well, not every instrument, but most, you know, it's, it's dripping in reverb. It's like this, there's this sort of like aura around everything that, that puts itself, you know, every, every element of the sound that holds itself in space. <clears throat> now, on the tape, those uh, aura, I don't know what the plural of aura is, those auras, those aura, whatever, I'll make one up. Anyway, those auras, um, they kind of extend almost to the point where they, yeah, they kind of extend and, and, and almost sort of blend together. And, and you know, obviously, we, again, mentioning the fact about uh, how this is mixed and how the reverb was added. Some people, some people really have a be in their bonnet about that. And frankly, let them, you know, they're not going to like the album, whatever. So, um, in comparison with the tape, this one is like, there actually seems almost more space between the instruments. Um, and I think that's almost, that's almost the biggest difference. Excuse me. <clears throat> so it's, it's really close. It really is close. It's possibly the closest um it's possibly the closest uh sounding vinyl pressing to tape that i've heard i mean obviously there's a lot of uh well <laughs> there's an awful lot of music that you can't get the tapes for but, but you know it's still you know i've heard quite a lot of things that you can't actually get but i've heard i've heard them you know um and um it's uh yeah it's it's i mean you you know you at the end of the day you gotta take your hat off to um uh kevin gray kevin gray wasn't it yeah who, who mastered this it's um it's a stunning job it really is um is it as good as the mofis or the mofi one steps well, you know, it's different music. So, you know, it's kind of like con comparing, a, you know, an, an apple and an orange. But um, purely in terms of how good it sounds and how, you know, genuinely how well I think they've done a job of this. Yeah, I'd say it is. I'd say it's every bit as good as the MoFi's. Um, so, uh, yeah, verdict on that is if you do like this music, um, and you have a half decent record player. I mean, I wouldn't buy this and put it on a. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't buy this and put it on a budget record player. Put it like that. Um, how big is the difference? I mean, that's another way of maybe we can quantify this. So you know, I know. Okay, I've, I've, I know. I know certain turntable ranges pretty well. So let's take clear audio as an example. Okay, so if I imagine playing this on a clear audio concept. Some of you will have one, some of you will know what I mean, right? So if I was to play this on the same turntable, how would I how would I grade that in terms of an upgraded turntable? I would say the difference between the two 
on a turntable like a concept, maybe a performance, it's at least going to an innovation. Okay, it's it's a it's a big big change. You will be really surprised. So um, you know that's that's really worth bearing in mind. But at the same time, you know it's it's let's. I think this was about you know seventy quid, uh, yeah, sixty seventy quid. So it's two and a half times the price. I mean, you know, you do, how many how many how many one step records do you buy before you kind of think ah oh, could have spent that money on buying a better turntable. It's a very good point. But at the end of the day, once you've bought it, you've got it. And of course, they only make 5,000 of these. Goodness knows how many there are left. I know David Brooks got some because uh, he rang me up this morning and said, hey, up, Chuck, hey, up, Chuck. There's, uh, everyone's bloody ringing me up, asking me what it sounds like. So, uh, yeah, hence I, um, I thought I'd better get on and do this video quick. Uh, it sounds, you know, to sum up, it sounds really, really, really stunning. It's every bit as good as the Mofis. Um, there's only 5,000 made. I mean, you know, presume there's, you know, 2,000 left, 3,000. I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, this is in the world. So, you know, there's not many left. Um, yeah, it's a big chunk of money. But um, my advice is if you like this recording, if you know this recording and you like it, I would buy this. Just, just do it. You won't regret it. And frankly, if in six months' time, because they'll all be sold out by then, in six months' time, if you think, oh, God, I'm not that sure, sell it. You'll probably make a profit. Okay? I don't really, you know, that's not really why I would suggest people go out buying records. God. In fact, it pisses me right off <laughs> on record store day when I go down to buy a record and it's all gone and then I see it on eBay at three times the price. Sun Ra Live in Egypt is one that's... Uh, Case in point, but anyway, um, yeah, it's stunning. Um, couldn't couldn't recommend it higher. So many thanks to David Brook from uh, thevinyladventure.com uh, for uh, sending me the record, and um, I would very strongly suggest you give him a call or drop him an email or go on the website www the vinyl um, and buy one while they're still left simple as that thank you very much and uh, happy listening and everyone stay safe and uh, hopefully see you soon cheers now bye bye